Hello, welcome to the WebConvert web event. I have today for this session a colleague with me. My name is Ralf Niklaus, and my colleague. My name is Markus Richter. Thank you very much. I'm pleased to be here and to introduce to you today our trailer product. And yeah, I'm looking forward to a very and uh, interesting and highly knowledge gaining session. We will try to do so. Okay, first of all, you have in your hands more yes. or less our VZ smart case. Yeah, new. I don't know if it's still new, but it's uh, practical. Yeah? So it's a very small case and you've got available everything you need for between your trailer or the modulator and the diagnose software. Great. The handy topic here is you don't have to take off the OBD cable. You can keep it all together. Yes. So it's always ready to use. And even in case that the cable will break down, you can easily take off the, just the cable and you have, can exchange the cable instead yeah. of the whole box. Okay. Um, further on, we have um, electricity, a power plug-in for uh, the VCI. Very important because in this case, we um, in, in a case of trailer diagnose, we not always have uh, power available to support the VC box with electricity. In this case, this little adapter um, gives you the possibility to do an update on the software and do the uh, firmware update right away so um, that you're always with the newest version on the road. With so those. you can do the update in your office yes. and prepare the tool for the next use outside onwards on a trailer. Exactly, exactly. Um, also, in this case available, we have our ISO plug. Um, so in this case, we have the OBD plug plus the connection to the trailer or the truck, mm -hmm. depending on what you have available. Or in our case, as we work with our trailer um, power case, mm -hmm. we um, can easily plug the ISO cable in and yeah, connect basically everything with power and have the diagnose available. It is the main adapter which you will use when you do the diagnosis on a EBS system, as there we yes. communicate via the CAN bus, and there on the ISO socket we have those cables available, so we are using them. Yes, exactly. On the other side we have a few <coughs> additional cables available, so all the necessary cables you basically need currently for a trailer diagnose. Um, we have our Haldex cable available. We have the Wapco and the Knorr cables available here. So um, specifically, in case you're using older Wapco cable, you can easily take our adapter and connect these old cables with our VCI straight so that you do not have an additional invest on cable. Exactly. The, the point is, it's not a pre-configured set. Our sales reps will um, inform you, get in touch with you, and you select together with them just the cables you need. There's not a must buy of a whole package on which half of the cables you never will use. You just buy those cables which you really use. Yeah, and the great advantage of our solution is the modularity that we have. So you basically choose what you need. In this case, if you do not use a Haldex uh, software either, you don't need the cable as well. So just don't buy it. Stay so with the Wapco and the Knorr cable and you will come along. The topic modularity, it's not only towards the cables which you need, it's also towards the software packages. Yes. You can split the software in any portion you would like to use. If you just make trailer diagnosis, so you just buy the trailer package. If you make a bus, a truck and trailer, so just buy truck and trailer package, no need for a bus package. And also, especially in, in the trailer topic, uh, you can choose between the multi-brand diagnosis and the original diagnosis on the brands Haldex and Wapco. So it's your decision and you will get an introduction uh, with our sales reps especially uh, in detail, so you can choose by your own which P 
piece do you need to buy and which one not? Yeah, every tool you purchase is a training included, a diagnose introduction training mm. included. So you will be guided personally in your workshop at your trailer or at your truck through our system so that you get to know how to connect and how to get access. Exactly. So I think we talked enough about the equipment in general. Yeah, we will start with Haldex, I suggest. No, with Knorr, I would suggest. Yes. Is that okay? Yes, with Knorr, exactly. So we just need our VC box and our ISO plot. So as you see, we have prepared three modulators, trailer EBS. I have one here from Knorr, also one from Haldex, and also one from um, Wapco. The first we would start is the Knobremse Trailer EBS version G2.2. Important for you is you must clearly identify which modulator you are doing the diagnosis. The best and the properest way how to do so is go underneath of the trailer Take a look on the built-in modulator, which you only can 100% make sure it's the right one by taking a look on it. A sticker on the side, the type sticker, the model sticker, very often won't indicate you which modulator is built in. Even if you take a look on the left-hand side, on the rear, where the handbrake valves are, there is also very often um, an RTR valve. One could be used from Wapco, the other could be used from Haldex, and underneath the electronics is from Knorr. For us, for the diagnosis, it's important to know which brand has the modulator, the electronics. And therefore, you will uh, find a help inside of the software, which we will take a look. Um, Ralf, just a question uh, regarding our camera view towards the trailer power case. Do you would like to in mention a few words? How the trailer... Yeah, we can do also. Um, could you switch to the other camera, please, to the two? Thank you. So as you see here, we are at the two, please. Thank you. As you see, we have here the cable from the output of the trailer power box going up via the standard connection cable, which you will find in the trailers or between trailer and truck and going inwards to the trailer. Um, this box at the moment, we will configure it as a truck. It's also possible to configure it as a trailer and check the outlets of the truck to check the lights and many, many more functions. I'll keep it in short. We have the connection established. Mode, then ignition on. Now it's on. We have all the lights on. In the display, we see real quick on pin one, which uh, provides our uh, pin 30, the battery power, um, with the plus button, we can switch to pin 2, which uh, supports with the pin 15, which is the ignition contact. There is a built-in multimeter, and we have in one overview the consumption of the device. We already switched on ignition. The, set is, the setup is ready to go. We take a look into the software now, please. We have here selected in red the trailers. Afterwards, you see in the manufacturer's drop-down list, we only have Haldex, Knobrems, and Wapco. More or less, there is not more available. Yeah, we do not choose in between the trailer manufacturer. We do not choose a Schmitz, a Krone, or a Kogel, or uh, whoever produces trailers. We just keep it with the Technic that is inside. Exactly. And that's a big difference, because in this case, <coughs> the first step basically is to identify the correct modulator. Exactly. So that's why I told you before, go underneath, take a look or take a photo with your smartphone. So you have a picture to compare 
with the pictures which I show you. I just select one. Okay, I take right now the right one, it's a Knorr. In the menu systems, there is another button, ECU identification help. And again, the function identification help, it opens a page on which you will find all known modulators from our side. It's not necessary in the drop down list to select immediately the proper brand. Uh, we display all the brands beginning with Haldex. Next step will be the Knorr modulators. And last but not least, you will find the Wapco modulators. So it's an easy going way to identify the modulator which you have seen underneath of the trailer, compare it with the picture you find here. In our case, if you compare the pictures, you see the underneath the name Knorr Bremse Teps G2. That's the look like, and it's the same look as we have it in our models here. So we know it's a Knorr Bremse trailer EBS generation two. In that case now, I memorize that. I can close this overview, go back into the systems and take Teps G2 point X. Point X means there are sub variations available. In our case is the 2.2. There's also a 2.0, a 2.1 available. But in our case for the diagnosis, it doesn't matter. Uh, the protocols will work with all versions of it. You see beside of the diagnosis button, we have manuals, component lists, a, a test procedure, test values, wiring diagrams. These are all additional technical data. And on the diagnosis, before we enter, you see in the smaller letters on which way we have to communicate. On the tabs G1 and G2, which is covered here, we must use the ISO adapter, ISO 7638. Um, the side socket on the vehicle, which is on the rear left on a standard uh, semi-trailer, it could be alternatively used by the plug we have seen also in the smart case. Yeah. But here we have the version 2. It works only with the ISO adapter. So we have here also already some assistance. So we will join now basically the multi-brand. Mm -hmm. And this is important to say because this multi-brand is our development. So we perform here on our own gain knowledge of the Knorr modulators. Exactly. We see here the communication towards the box. First, it was blue, so it was the communication between a laptop and interface. Now it's switching to green. We have the next step, communication between interface and modulator. And in the software, we see it with the battery logo on the upper right corner. It's provided with 25.83 volts, so it's more than enough. If we are going in low power, the color will change from green to orange, then to red. And if we are going deeper, uh, even the box will flicker with the colors, will make some noises, yes. annoying ones. So that's the indication for you. We are running in low power. It's not any more uh, safe to make the diagnosis. You could receive wrong values. Yes. Okay. What we see here, sure, fault memory. That's one of the most important functions. Read out the fault codes, delete the fault codes. Exactly. And the fault codes in this case that we will read out will be the original fault codes from the manufacturer, even though this uh, the, the Knorr uh, diagnosis is our own development here in this case we have the original Knorr fault codes. So therefore, in case you need further help, additional help, um, you can contact a Knorr service partner with these fault codes and they can easily, uh, should be able to help you easily. Exactly. Um, I don't go into detail here of the fault memory. 
because there we had in the past already some sessions explaining the smart guide, the online help function. So I think we save a little bit time as we are running short in time for sure. Um, it's available here. Here we have also the possibility to erase them. Next point, the data lists. Selection, there you have here an overview of all the data which we will read out, which we are able to read out. But for example, imagine you have a standard trailer with three axles. Here we have a position, for example, brake chamber value for, uh, for axle five, which type and the lever length in millimeter. If you don't have the fifth axle built in, we still have the function, the possibility to read out the value. It's a capability of the modulator, but it don't means it is programmed in a way that we can read out data. So they will come out not available or zero or something like that. Yeah. And you can choose in between. So if you want to take different uh, yeah, values to, to view on, you can easily choose them. And in the next step, you will probably show us now. We can I just show them. Select the three of them, exactly. which I'm not sure if there is coming out any data or any plausible data. So we have it. We have a view in uh, the numbers, but we can also show it in a visual way. Exactly. So down there, the first select, the first four selected rows could be displayed graphically. So we have here a graph which takes the values. Exactly. Depending on which measurement I'm doing, it could be very useful to see in movement the, the values which uh, are changing. Yeah, in comparison to each other. Exactly. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Going back to the selection. Going to the functions. There we have the activations, calibrations, and self-test functions. I think one of the most important ones is the calibration for your business. And here, the first two menu points. That's when the modulator is defective and you have to replace it. So in the first step, read data from ECU and save data to file means we take the programming data out of the modulator, store it into the laptop, into your device. Then you will exchange the modulator, build in a new one, which has none or a standard data setup, but you need to put on there the previously stored data. So it will fit, it will match towards the needs of the trailer. Yes. So that's where we take the button number two, write data to ECU from file. So we take the file from the laptop and upload it into the modulator. The new modulator. Into the new one, exactly. exactly. So in that case, that's everything. Afterwards, make a end of line test, check, that's it. Also available here in our software. Yep. It's in functions. Self tests, the second one, end of line test. Exactly. Here we have some automatic test functions available. Well, some, a lot of them. See here the first page with a continue button. We can switch to the second page. More self tests, which will uh, give you information about the vehicle. And on the last page, the, la the last one, electrical AUXIO check. So, even that you can confirm and check which additional equipment has to be mounted on the parametration of this modulator. Yeah. On everything, you will find a help file which indicates you which are the conditions you have to fulfill in advance um, and why is this function in there? In this case, this function is used to test the functionality of the AUXIO inputs, uh, outputs, test conditions, trailer should be supplied with voltage, uh, trailer is secured and cannot roll away. Some notes, moving parts can cause a risk of crushing, 
and afterwards you see the procedure step by step what will happen. Here, that's a very easy and small function. In some other functions, the list could be longer. There could be more preconditions uh, which you have to fulfill, like temperatures, like liquids, whatever. But it's everything described in the help file. Yeah. At a certain point, you will get asked by the software for the super pen. We will this, see that in the next one. Exactly. Yeah. This uh, um, will be a significant part for you to, to uh, ensure security towards your yeah. uh, employees and also to your customer. We'll talk that right away in detail when we need it, when we switch. I thought you will open up a function, okay. I, no, I, I will we'll switch to the Haldex, as there we have immediately the input of the okay. super pin. So we close down the software. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, you see still Knorr-Bremse is selected, but not. there is not an active communication. You see it even also in the box. It's lighting white, meaning it's just powered, nothing else. So it's not blue nor green. So there is no active communication there. So we just plugged it on to the Haldex device. Turned, turned the ignition turned on once more. Turned the ignition more. again on. Yeah. Exactly. So now we take Knorr-Bremse, switch towards Haldex. And one of the first requests we will receive is the super pin. So in the menu, you see all the Haldex possibilities. For EBS, there's only one menu point. So, but you know, probably there are many ECUs from Haldex available. Here we have the EBS plus generation three. There is a generation two available. EB plus is available, but Haldex OE software don't care about it. It's used by the same software. Yes. In our case, EBS, you see also here component list, test values, wiring diagrams. We go towards the diagnosis, Haldex Diac Plus. Now the first step to open the software. Here we have the question about a super pin. Exactly. The super pin you will gain with the purchase of the system. So we will um, give this super pin to you as soon as you get the introduction of our sales reps or of our <coughs> employee, of our distributor. Um, and this prevents you basically to, to work <coughs> in functions where people are not aware of what they are doing there. So in this case, the super pin should only be handed over to people who have the technical knowledge of what they are doing. And this is important yep. because Otherwise, it might end up in a small catastrophe that you calibrate or parameterize um, a trailer uh, with significant functions um, in a way um, where you can cause accidents. Exactly. So, so that's the security for yourself and for the vehicle and for your purse. Exactly. Everything, maybe you can keep one thing in mind with the VZ software in general. Everything what you could do without using the super pin is easily reversible. Meaning you unplug the battery, wait two or three minutes, plug it on again, and you have back the same situation as you had it before. Yes. The super pin is the confirmation that you are allowed to write something into the electronics of the modulator. So you can there permanently change conditions. Yes. And that's, this can happen into troubles. What we should mention here in the beginning of joining the Haldex software is also um, that uh, you need a training for the software. Mm -hmm. um, you have basically time for six months to gain this training to, uh, yeah, basically uh, to to uh, yeah, finish an, a successful training yep. and uh, enter or send over the certificate over to Vapkovurt that we can uh, pass this through. Otherwise, the software will be locked down um, and will not be available any, anymore. But the good thing is, as soon as you have a Haldex trailer coming up on your property, you can easily 
get access to the Hulex software, exactly. even though you have not had it before. Yep. And if you have already the training, we take a copy of it and we put it in our documentation. Yes, the client has the training uh, uh, absolved already, so it's cleared to go. Yeah, I mentioned at the beginning, if you do not have the Haldex software because of no need, if there is a need now, just call us, order uh, one of the licenses, make an update with the system, and you can proceed working. That's, so That's the topic of about maximum 30 minutes and you're ready to go. Yes. Uh, in the next step, as we are trying to connect, uh, we have to choose on which way are we connected. So we have the possibility, depending on the modulator, to use one of the extra sockets or to use the ISO socket. In our case, as I uh, promoted before, for EBS systems, the ISO adapter is mostly sufficient. So we put that one on, we have selected that one, and now the software tries to establish the communication automatically to the modulator. So mm -hmm. here the software by himself finds out it's an EBS generation three, two, EB plus, whatever, maybe an ABS system, a newer one, then also the communication will be established. And those of you who have already had experience with Haldex will already see that you see now the original surface of the Haldex software. So we work with the original software, which gives you the advantage to serve warranty issues properly towards Haldex. So you can easily do an, an exchange or a complaint, uh, repair of a complaint uh, and fulfill the warranty requirements. Exactly. So about warranty means there must be somewhere a fault code in advance. That's the way how it looks like. Here we have the main data and pressing the information button, the DTC info button, you will get the explanation how does it come towards this fault code and how can you fix it. And I think these topics are the ones which are very important for your workshop, for the mechanics there, Yes. how to repair the trailer which is in front of me. And the best information is the information you can get from the OE. None of other uh, uh, multi-brand tools is uh, able to give this information so detailed and so confirmed from OE. Okay. That's how it looks like. For example, here, um, what also is important as we talked about warranty, if I print the fault codes out, that's how it looks like. That's the original form from Haldex. It's fully accepted from Haldex. It's fully accepted from um, the uh, um, manufacturers of trailers. For example, Krone will accept a Haldex printout for warranty issues. Yes. And on a multi-brand tool, on a standard multi-brand tool, you will have their issues. Okay. okay. Do you want to dive deeper into or shall we close down Haldex yet to show a bit more of the workflow? I would uh, dive a little bit deeper because we have here the button fleet plus data. Yes. That's the second very important data set which the manufacturers of trailers will demand in cases of warranty. So there you can download the lifetime data of the modulator, transfer it via email, for example, so they can read out the loads, the numbers of breaks, and everything about what happened in the lifetime. That's important for warranty issues. And another topic, the programmation. Here we have the possibility to do the same as I explained before, with the CNOR in multi-brand to download the data and to upload it again. In addition here, we have the possibility, in some cases, the modulator electronically burns up. So meaning you are not able to download any data. You can't get any connection. In such a case, you can order 
the parametration file from the manufacturer of the trailer. He will send it to you by email. You can import it into the laptop and upload it into the VCI. Via multibrand, that's not possible because they always send only the OE data set. And with the OE software, you're completely on the level of OE, so just yeah. upload it. Okay, so not going deeper now. So Ralph will now close down the software um, down so that we can switch the modulator. Exactly. The box we just turned off. white, so communication is closed down. Ready to switch. Ready to switch on to the Wapco modulator once the ignition. And here we go. Perfect, ignition is on. So we go again to the drop down menu, select the Wapco. <clears throat> Meaning you have defined before that we talk about a Wapco modulator. So in this case, even though if you have a, a plate, a Wapco identification plate, which is a lot of times very dirty and uh, very much rubbed off, where you do not find information anymore, um, if you can just see that we talk about a Wapco modulator, we can identify the right Wapco modulator automatically with our system. So this is a little nice add-on to um, give you a bit more help by identifying the right modulator. It needs a little bit longer than selecting it manually, yes. but here you don't have any issues. It will identify any Wapco device which is connected to the CAN bus communication, yes. so everything will be set it up. I'm just not sure if we will wait until it's finished, but I think we'll find some more words <laughs> how to fill up the time. For yeah, the, what the we, what we can definitely say here at this point is the, the biggest difference between the Wapco and the Haldex uh, software is that you do not have one training session to open up the whole software yeah. as it is on Haldex. On the Wapco side, we have different pins. We have personalized pins. So um, your employee have to gain uh, training at the Webco Academy and yeah, gain the one out of the two pins to be able to work with the software properly. Mm -hmm. Because during the whole uh, diagnose uh, work, uh, on certain points you will ask for the specific pin, meaning a parameterization or a calibration um, uh, will, be, will be asked for a specific pin. In this case, you have an employee that has this pin, you can pass it. Otherwise, please ensure that you uh, will have a training where you gain the pin. Difference here is you cannot proceed with the software if you do not have the pin. Well, proceed with the software, I don't know if that's the right wording. I would say- On the functions where a pin is required. Yes, so meaning using the Wapco software, is available always. You can read out the fault codes, you can delete fault codes, you can go through all the test procedures, yes. you can go through every diagnostic functionality except of writing data into the modulator. So everything you will write into and store into it, therefore a pin is needed. Okay? Software is here. We can get and the connection established. Yeah, and most of the people see here already. It's the surface of the regular Wapco uh, software. The only difference we have here is that we have to uh, tell the software what kind of connection do we have to the modulator? What kind of cable connection do we have to the modulator? So if we do it manual, you're right, via the scan. It's set it up already automatically. That's also exactly. done in the automatic identification. So reading parameters, we are connected as you see. We have the data read out of the modulator. The interface is again green, so communicating to the electronics. Here we have the same topics as we have talked on Haldex. For example, in the messages section, Diagnostic memory, I see the failure right now, the default. 
via uh, info. I receive additional information in detail from OE also. So the best information I can get. And last but not least here, if I go into print out, I also have the original printout of the fault code. So it serves me in the same way in Hal as Haldex via the manufacturer of the trailer in warranty issues. I have the original documentation, which all of the brands are accepting. it. Yeah. And one of the greatest features, maybe we still have some time and you could uh, could show this also, is the, the OD, ODR tracking that mm -hmm. we have. So we have also the availability on, on Wapco, similar as on Haldex, to read out yeah, basically all data that such a modulator can gain. Would you like to read out ODR tracker or just ODR data? We can read it out and show it afterwards if you want to. The big one or small? Yeah, I'll show the big one. The big one, okay. Yeah, we still have some time left, so we can <laughs> we can give it a try. Um, because you can find significant information here. And um, we have companies that are interested in it, such as technical organizations that prove um, of how, for example, accidents come along. Yeah? Mm -hmm. To find uh, breaking points of a trailer, for example. Yeah? How was the load uh, loaded on the trailer? Um, so you can easily find out how the driver is going, uh, uh, yeah, taking care of the trailer. Yeah, that's right. Um, oh. if, he's, if he's a careful driver, for example, as well. Yeah. So yep. sometimes some, some repairs can be explained by such reading out such data. Yep, that's right. So the ODR tracker is um, an additional software which is not covered by the scan. So in that case, now, as you told, mentioned before, cable selection, which cable have we in use? In our case, it's the ISO cable, the left one. And in the second step, asking in which direction it is plugged in. And the hint, keep the switch in position zero. So we have plugged in the female side of the adapter into the trailer, so we have to use the right button. But don't worry, you will receive an introduction into the system when you buy it, and it's covering also this communication in detail. So yeah. don't and worry in, about it. And in this case, you, you can also mention it is not like uh, uh, when, you, when you take the different cable on charging a battery from a car. Um, in this case, you will not destroy the modulator just by switching the wrong choice here in the software. Right. I think this should be important. The only thing that happens is that you won't get any connection. So just try the other way and you will be successful. Yep. Another topic that's an advantage of our software as well. So here we have established a communication already, downloading the data. In the meantime, no, we are blocked. Now it's downloading. In that case, it's not possible. Okay, we have the possibility on the Wapco Academy to book trainings as well. So besides the PIN training, we should mention that there are several technical trainings available that you can choose between electrical trainings, between air pressure trainings, modulator trainings. So a lot of specific trainings that are available on the Wapco Academy. Um, besides that, we have also additional advices in the software. We have our uh, Wapco handbooks, mm -hmm. so the original Wapco handbooks. That's what I would, we would try like, to uh, open in the meantime. Which but... we would like to show uh, you in a few minutes are, um, are also uh, available. Mm -hmm. um, and so we give you basically a round package of support and service with what you can serve your customer or your trailers uh, in, a, in a proper way. And now I will escalate this help possibility as if you are a customer of us, that's absolutely easy to get not only at the product hotline from Wapco Word covering um, the laptop from us, the software from us, until the communication is established. You also have the possibility to get technical help in detail from Wapco from OE hotline as well as from Haldex. 
Yes. So if you encounter there any bigger problem which you can't solve by yourself, just call them. It's included. It's for free except of the Wapco hotline. They charge 20 cent. So German price 20 cent per call. So I think that's almost free. Yeah. So, but we see we have some data to download. It still needs time. I don't think so. We uh, maybe we are lucky. Not uh, see. Proceeding. Just just talked about so and we can proceed. So okay. Running to an end. Yep, I want to. Uh, in the first page info, you see very easy with a green smiley, nice data. Parameters are great. Yep. Um, if they are bad, you will see a red, bad smiley in that case. You have a lot of possibilities to check the data. A lot of tabs up here. But unfortunately, this is a new modulator, so you will not find uh, stored data on it. But that's the same as we have seen in Fleet Plus from Haldex, the data which you can forward towards the manufacturer of the trailer and he can read out here all the specific data if he will go into warranty or not. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Great. Would you like to open up the handbook once more just to show where we have the... Yeah, the you the are so right. Um, I'll take just the tabs E. I think that's one of the most common ones which we are having in the moment here. Taking a look into the manual. Here we see we have the original OE handbooks. So it's nothing self-written, nothing self-painted. It's from the OE. You see all the different chapters, every information about it. If we go into the same section, wiring diagrams, these are the pneumatic wirings in that case. Also, uh, original plans on which you can see how it has to be uh, connected. And nevertheless, the diagnostic still stays open, as you maybe know it from our multi brand version. So, we have different tabs which we can use simultaneously at the same time. Reading documentations or technical informations will not abort a communication towards a modulator. Yeah, a diagnosed process, exactly. So, overall, we can say if there is an interest about our solution, please get in touch with us. Um, we have different colleagues all over in Europe where we can serve you our product, where we can introduce the product to you. Um, we're open for every kind of question you have, and also for where you can get the tool, we can kindly help you in this case. Um, I would say thank you very much to an end. Exactly. So the chat is still in operation. We still have the specialists uh, behind the scenes, which will answer your questions. As you already begin, thank you very much yeah. that you have been with us today and hope to see you in one of the next sessions. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.